Good job, BJ. That was easy. That was easy. Yes, absolutely. We have we have another gear, and, and um, you know, we're seeing it kind of week to week. It's you know UConn was a slow start, and then really other, every other game it's been a pretty fast start, and then it's it was a slow finish this past week. You know, honestly, it was just a, a little bit of lack of, of of execution, a little bit of lack of focus. Uh, I think the energy dipped a little bit. We just can't. I mean, it doesn't matter if, if we have thirty five thousand screaming Bronco fans in the stadium, or there's. You know, it's, 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 it feels like a, a spring scrimmage with nobody that's closed to the public. We got to have the same kind of, you know, energy and bring it every, every day. And, um, you know, we've done that at times, but I just think at the end of the games, you know, especially when you're trying to, you're trying to get some other guys involved um, that maybe haven't repped to those plays as, as, you know, as, as frequently, we need those guys to be ready to step in and rep those plays. You said a couple times this year already that you came here to score a whole bunch of points and <clears throat> haven't quite gotten that done and, mm-hmm. and there's been opportunities there but just haven't quite right. finished the deal yet. Frustrated at all that you guys are just not quite getting the, the capitalized the, the way here, you Here's the thing, I mean, in terms of scoring points outside of the old Miss game, a lot of it's been in those, uh, you know, when you're trying to put, to put together that masterpiece game and the 58 to <laughs> six wins, all that good stuff that, you know, that a lot of teams think are unethical. But I mean, we're, <laughs> we're, we're trying to put together those kinds of masterpieces. I mean, we're playing well when the game's in the balance, yeah. you know, out, probably outside of, of uh, you know the the fourth quarter of the the Ole Miss game, um, but I do I do think that you know we just need to learn to put the finishing touches on a full complete game you know and and it also I mean, we played good defenses you know, that's the other thing I mean you, you look at our schedule I mean we we don't have any one double A's on our on our schedule I mean three of the four teams that we played this year have they won bowl games last year they, you know they're you know, talking about conference champions you're talking about you know teams that beat Pac-12 teams in the you know in this season and. So we're playing against good teams. I mean, in terms of, you know, comparative analysis on scoring, that stuff's so relative, especially when you're four games into a season. It doesn't matter. You know, what does matter is how you're playing. Um, and, and right now we're playing good football, but we're very, uh, very much still a work in progress because we're looking for that complete performance, and we haven't gotten that quite yet. You guys got, I mean, a guy like Jay back there, we've seen how, we've seen how effectively he gets off to a start. Is, I mean, is he a guy that can help you guys milk that clock? And then, but then we give him 45 touches, and everybody's <laughs> calling me an idiot. So, no, I'm just playing. Um, no, I mean, but, I mean, it, he, yes, he is a guy. You know, we're going to need that this year. But when we're, you know, we're we're in that situation, it's, it's that in between situation where you know somewhere between a, you know, a three possession, two possession, three possession, four possession ball game, and you know, you want to put the pedal to the metal. Uh, you want to keep, you know, keep going, keep scoring. Um, and you kind of also want to, you know, just you know, get a little ground and pound going. Uh, there's a fine line, but I think what was good to see, even though we didn't end up scoring a touchdown out of the drive, was it was really good to see Devin Demas come there late in the game and, and change field position because we had two consecutive drives where we were backed up. You know, we're inside our own 10 yard line. One of those we were inside our own two yard line, one yard line for that matter. Um, and for Devin to, to give us that spark we've been looking for from him um, was great to see. And you know, guys are uh, this is this is a meritocracy. You know, this this offense is you know guys that that earn the right to play and they do it on the field. We're going to give them more opportunities. I mean, he's one did that. How do you see Devin and Chad and some of these guys that finally are getting to see some results? How do you see that helping? And I guess that kind of just pushes them in practice, knowing that they you know, can be a part of it. Yeah, I mean, I th- it's great to see it actually show up on game day because we've seen it in scrimmages. We've seen it in practice. Um, and I think with Chaz, it was, we kind of needed that moment where he starts to get some confidence in being out in the field on game day and playing. And he, he did a nice job. And, and I think – I think it's just the just the tip of the iceberg for what Chaz can do for us in this offense. So, you know, but we also need to challenge those guys, those guys that are on the fringe of being, you know, productive playmaker types for us. That you know, we need them to step up. The Chaz, the the Devin Demas, the Jack Fields, step up and and be professionals about your preparation, and they're doing a good job. You know, we're we're getting better there. Um, it, you know, it's not just the I hope I get a couple of touches and hope I have a couple of good plays. No, we we want you to be out there and be ready to contribute on a regular basis.
I think the thing about him, I mean, he's gotten so many reps in practice, so many reps in meaningful scrimmage situations because we're obviously not going to run Jay into the ground either in practice or in scrimmages, you know, in fall camp and uh, during spring ball. So, you know, I think he really does have some confidence in what he's doing. And I think now that he actually had some confidence doing it on a Saturday, you know, with, uh, you know, under the bright lights, I think that he's, he's, getting, he's getting comfortable. And, you know, I, I, I got a lot of confidence in what he can do. And he's not just a speed guy. Um, I've seen him run between the tackles effectively against our defense, who has proven to be one of the best rush defenses in America. And I think that we didn't know it at the time, you know, all spring when we're just running into each other full speed and we're, you know, some give, some take. But we're, we're going against one of the best rush defenses in America, and, and that's a great litmus test for us as an offense. Well, speaking, speaking of best rush defenses, Air Force has one. They sure do, number so, six in the country. What's, what's kind of stood out for you when you look at the tape of them and what makes them you know, good in that aspect? Yeah, I mean, they, uh, that's a good football team, too. I mean, they're, they're much improved from a year ago. I think they're, um, you know, defensively, I think they're trying to challenge you, get up in your face a little bit more out on the perimeter, uh, make you earn everything. And, and they're really doing a good job of loading up the box. I mean, there's, there's quite a few pressures that they bring that you know, we, we got to have answers for um, because they're – you know, they do a very good job with, uh, with, with playing good team defense. You know, it's not – when you look at their unit, it's not a uh, – you know, there's not one or two superstars on this, on this defense like we've kind of seen the last few weeks. I mean, this is, this is a defense that's, that's – you know, there's 11 guys that are playing hard together and just, you know, fighting and clawing and scratching for everything they can get. And they're doing a really good job against the run right now. And that's, that's a winning football uh, formula. You know, run the, run the ball, you know, stop the run, don't turn it over, get turnovers. I mean, that's kind of what we've tried to do as well. So it's going to be good on good from that standpoint. You seem to grant continue to, to, to process better. Coach, you know, Harson was saying that you're getting through his reads quicker and getting to that third mm-hmm. guy. And I did it a couple of times. And one of them, you know, he just took a shot right at it. But how does he, how is he growing in those regards? He's growing a ton. And, uh, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff that I saw even in the old Miss game that gave me a lot of hope for what he could be um, in terms of just getting through his progression. Just the growth that he's made from a year ago to, to spring ball to the summer and what he did and taking ownership over the summer program. Uh, and then just, you know, just, just even in the, through the course of the season, just getting more comfortable with what we're doing offensively, asking more out of him. We're asking a whole lot out of him in terms of, you know, read progressions and uh, getting us to the right plays in certain situations. And, Finding Jay in the checkdowns. I mean, the fact that our tailback is, I believe, a top 50 national receiver. I believe so. Somewhere in the top 50 in, in, in receptions um, at, for all positions. You know, that we're not calling a ton of just, you know, throw it to Jay plays. There's a couple, but we're, you know, a lot of it's just the byproduct of him going through his progressions one, two, three, and four. And Jay might be three or four in the progression, but he's actually going through those progressions, finding Jay and getting positive yards. That's to me. That's that's a big sign of maturity, you know, in a progression read based offense. You guys have done a lot of that with the guy out on the side, the check down being the guy way out wide on the side. Now, what, what's the, I guess, what's the reason for doing that versus sort of the more traditional guy, you know, two yards over the middle kind of check down? Well, I think we've done a pretty good, good, uh, you know, fair share of both of them. I think some of it in the run game is going to be with the guy wide um, to be able to, you know, counter a team that's trying to play six, seven, you know, guys packed down in there in the box, um, so we can we can flip one out there, but. Uh, in the passing game, you know, some of it is it's pure progression where we might start, you know, start into the boundary and progress across, you know, one, two, three, four, and your your number four outlet could be all the way out there to the field. And the thing that's great about it is when your eyes start, you know, into the short side of the field and you progress all the way to the wide side of the field and you have a tailback that's out there wide, there's generally going to be a lot of space for him to get some extra yards after catch. And, uh, you know, just by, by concept, they're all pretty unique, uh, but we do have check downs with the tailbacks over the ball. You know, like you said, in the traditional three, four yards down the field, we also have very, you know, check downs where they're they're out wide to the field or even wide to the boundary. So um, it just moved. Out. I, I really, believe, Coach Harson, myself, Coach Riddle, our whole staff really believe in in uh, getting the ball to the tailbacks in, in the passing game, and that's that's been good to see. You guys have run the Wildcats. So I don't think you even had Matt in the Wildcats. Some of these Colorado State, and you scored a couple touchdowns off. I think. What do you like about that? I, I just think it's a good – it's something else for a defense to prepare for that, uh, you know, all, everything we do, we want it to be very sound. And so it's not – we're not deviating necessarily from our schemes, but we're just doing it in a different way and getting people in different positions and utilizing some of our best personnel in different ways. Um, you know, that's all stuff that we feel like Grant could do, you know, but maybe that is a, maybe a hit that you can take off Grant in between the tackles. Um, and, you know, it does it, – it creates, it creates matchups. It creates an unbalanced set that a defense has to account for, and then we have answers off that. So, you know, it's not, 
the thing I like about our uh, our different packages is it's not just running unbalanced or running uh, a wildcat, and that's the only play we have out of it. You know, we might we might carry multiple multiple plays out of that same package, and we see them playing this way, then we're going to answer with with maybe two or three or four uh, options within that within that scheme. You know, last week you said like when it comes to Grant, there's a difference between being the guy at the beginning of the season and inheriting a role. Now that he's no longer even if you inherit a role, you're still probably looking over the shoulder, your shoulder for advice from the number one at times. How is how is that mental approach changed for him? And it seems like you know, even talking on the map of the game, he's growing in confidence. Yeah, a lot. And and you know, I, the other thing too, I, I really like where we're at in terms of the just the, the quarterback room, you know, and just the relationships that those guys have with each other. Um, you get you get guys. I mean, Ryan Finley and and, uh, and Grant come in almost you know at the same time every day, and you know start thinking about the game plan together. You know, going through you know the ready list and stuff that we have up on the board as ideas on a Monday, um, and and you know Grant's taking more ownership in actually what he wants to see in the game plan as well. And I've challenged him to do that. You know, the great quarterbacks I've been around, you know, they're very particular about what they want to run. You know, and instead of just being a guy that's you know just a good soldier and tell me what to do and I'll do it. Um, also take a little bit of ownership and tell me that I really like this concept or I, maybe I don't like this concept and I'm not seeing it the same way as you guys do. And, and you know, at the end of the day, it's all about the quarterback. It's all about him feeling comfortable. He's taking a whole lot more ownership and all that. I mean, got a couple of text messages this morning uh, from him and he's, you know, he wants to see this and this. And that to me is a huge sign of improvement and maturity uh, just in terms of his preparation. Well, he was he was on the field a whole lot more than me. So. <laughs> right now, right now, right now, I see a whole lot of similarities between me and, me and Ryan Finley at that point. Both tall, skinny, skinny young bucks that are uh, doing a good job of uh, being the the, uh, the decoy signaler, uh, possibly the real one, possibly the decoy one. Um, but uh, you know, I think with with Grant, um, I think the thing that I, I do really like about him that I tried to always, you know, maintain throughout the course of my playing career and now as a coach is that. You know, he doesn't let his highs get too high and his lows get too low. And uh, I think even in the even in the very first game with all the turnovers, he never he never really you know got in a shell. He never you know stopped cutting it loose and never stopped fighting. Um, and I, I do one thing that I always enjoyed as a quarterback myself is early on in a game I wanted to take a big old hit, you know. And uh, and and I grants the same way. He doesn't feel like he's really in the groove in the rhythm until he either either takes a big hit throwing a ball down the field completing it hearing that great crowd noise um right after you know wearing one on the chin uh or taking off and running kind of feel like you're in the, in the mix and that's something that he and i talk about a lot when we're putting together a game plan um you know particularly the way we open our our game up is he wants to feel like he's in the game you know he's a tough kid and i love that about him and uh you know if, if that's something that i wanted to be known as was somebody who was tough as a quarterback and i think that that he personifies that in every way. So leave a guy unblocked on the first play of every game? Probably not. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll probably do away with that. Uh, uh, we we'll try to take away those huge uh, flush hits, maybe just a, just a little little nudge or something, um, take off and run, get 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 going. But, yeah, it's, uh, that was something that, that I, it's, it's funny. I mean, a lot of quarterbacks are the same. Some, some guys want to just stay clean the whole game and all that, but um, Grant's very similar. When, whenever we asked, uh, you know, when I was at Stanford and Andrew Luck was finished up his senior year, um, we asked him, what, what did you want to have early in the game? He said, well, I want to get, a, I want to get a, a get hit play. I want to get outside the pocket play. Um, and I wanted just an easy completion play. <laughs> so he said it like every week. And you know, I think it's pretty similar. A lot of quarterbacks feel the same way. They just want to feel like they're into it. Turnovers are really stopped for you guys. So what's the reason for that? Well, we got to keep knocking on wood here. If I find some over there. But um, we, we emphasize it a lot. You know, and, and the thing I'm probably most proud about our guys, and we got to continue this because we've played against some teams that do a good job of forcing turnovers, is uh, we're holding on to the football better. You know, I mean, obviously interceptions, that's really been our only turnovers. You know, consistent turnovers have been interceptions uh, earlier in the first two games. But, uh, you know, we keep holding on to the football and not fumbling. The amount, of, the amount of, you know, reps that Jay's getting, I'm really proud of him in the way that he's holding on to the football. Um, he's got to continue to just take great pride in that. Um, because you know that's that's something that is a, you know that's going to help us win games, and we, we emphasize it every week. And uh, we're on a you know we talk about being on a on a turnover free streak, and we got to continue that. We have a two game streak, 
and really Colorado State, we had, you know, I had one in the red zone that was, you know, like we talked about, was, was just an unfortunate play. So if we continue to do that, you know, our defense getting turnovers the way they are and playing the, playing the run like they are, you know, I think we're, we're in a good position to keep winning some games, hopefully. Dr. Crow, uh, the, the contribution he's made to your offense, uh, how important, how valuable has that guy been here in the first four games? Jake Rose, a, he's, a, he's a great player. Um, and a versatile player, a tough player, a guy that you feel like you could play at receiver, you could play at tight end, you could play at fullback. Um, I, I just think that the fact that, I mean, I, you forget that he's, he's playing his freshman year right now. I mean, you forget that. He seems so mature. He seems like he's so dialed into what we're doing. He's going to have a tremendous career here. He's already on well on his way. Um, but now we get a couple other guys back too, and you know Holden's back healthy, and uh, Connor Peters excited to see the, the Bruiser out there and see what he can do, and um, you know Jake Hardy's playing great football. So that I mean that real really that whole group is is doing things that gets you really excited, and then there's a you know fresh crop of young guys that are redshirting right now. So um, Coach Drinkwitz going to have some some uh, some decisions to make in the near future uh, about who who to put out there on the field. But we're going to use all, all those guys and use their strengths. Last one. Mike, we got Dodgers Giants this week. Oh, man.